Hi, I'm Kate with BC for You. I use she, her pronouns. Today we're going to talk about anatomy and physiology. When we talk about anatomy and physiology, I'm going to be using terms like person with a vagina and person with a penis instead of female and male. This is because these terms are more gender inclusive. First, we're going to talk about the vulva. The vulva is the external portion of the genitals for a person with a vagina. People with vaginas often wonder if their vulva is normal. It's really important to know that each vulva is unique and they vary in shape, color, and size. Now we're gonna go ahead and talk about each part of the vulva. Mons, the skin that covers the pubic bone. As someone goes through puberty, they start to grow hair in this area. Labia majora, these are two outer skin folds of the vulva. They protect the more inner parts of the vulva. Labia minora. These are two smaller skin folds that are located within the labia majora. These protect the vaginal opening. Vaginal opening. This is the entrance to the vagina. Hymen. This is a thin flap of tissue that can completely or partially cover the vaginal opening. A common misconception is that the hymen only breaks from having sex. It actually can stretch or perforate from a wide range of activities like using tampons, riding a bike, or sexual activities like inserting fingers, sex toys, or penises. Clitoris. The clitoris is made up of the glands and the hood. The glands is also known as the pleasure zone, and the hood is there to protect the glands. Urethral opening. This is where urine is able to exit the body. We just reviewed the vulva, which is the external portion of the genitalia for a person with a vagina. Now we're gonna talk about what's on the inside. Vagina. This is a muscular canal which connects the internal structures to the outside of the body. This is the structure where tampons, menstrual cups, fingers, sex toys, and penises go. Cervix. This separates the vagina from the uterus and is the opening to the uterus. This is the structure that opens up during childbirth so that the baby can exit the uterus and come out through the vaginal canal. Uterus. This is a strong organ that is about the size of a closed fist. It is where fetuses grow when someone becomes pregnant. Fallopian tubes. These are two narrow tubes that connect the ovary and the uterus. This is the pathway eggs take to travel from the ovary to the uterus and where sperm and egg typically meet. And if they do, the egg becomes fertilized. Ovaries. Most people born with vaginas are born with two ovaries. It is where eggs are stored and released during ovulation. After puberty, the ovaries typically release one egg a month. These are also responsible for producing estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone for the body. Now we're going to talk about the parts that make up the genitalia for a person with a penis. It's really important to know that the penis, testicles, and scrotum all vary in color, shape, and size. Penis. This is the organ for urination, releasing sperm, and sexual pleasure. During arousal, blood flow increases to the shaft of the penis, which makes it become rigid and erect. There are three different parts of the penis. The glands. This is the head of the penis. It's typically the most sensitive part of the penis. This is the location where the urethra opens to the outside of the body and urine exits. Shaft. This is located below the head of the penis and connects to the lower abdomen. Foreskin. This is a patch of skin that protects the glands portion of the penis. This can also be the most sensitive portion of the penis. Sometimes people have their foreskin removed typically soon after birth. This is called circumcision. Scrotum. This is pouch-like skin that hangs behind the penis and holds the testicles. This keeps the testicles the right temperature. Testicles. These are oval organs that are contained in the scrotum. Most people with a penis have two. These are responsible for producing testosterone and sperm. Epididymis. This is located on the back of the testicles and stores sperm until they reach maturity. Vas deferens. These are tubes that carry sperm from the epididymis to the urethra. Urethra. Allows urine and ejaculate to exit the body. When a person with a penis reaches climax, 
the urethra blocks the bladder and ejaculate flows through the urethra and out of the penis. Seminal vesicles. These produce fluid that make up the majority of the ejaculatory fluid and helps with the mobility of sperm. Prostate. This also helps produce fluid for ejaculation. The urethra runs through the center of the prostate. While the genitalia of a person with a vagina and a person with a penis are very different, the hygiene, which is also known as how we clean ourselves, is very similar. Hygiene. It is important to incorporate cleaning these body parts into your hygiene. A good rule of thumb is to use unscented and mild soaps in areas where hair grows and only use warm water in your hand anywhere that hair does not grow. If you have a foreskin, be sure to pull the foreskin away from the head of the penis and use water to wash the tip of the penis. If you have any questions about anything that we just talked about, you can text us at 720-593-9880 or call us at 720-777-2248.